Nations. We start in the Middle East, where it appears Israel is moving to a new phase of its military operation. Residents from the southern Gazan city of Khan Yunis have started to return home after the Israel Defence Forces say they have withdrawn all of its manoeuvring ground forces, leaving just one brigade. Israeli Defence Minister Yoav Gallant says troops have been pulled out to prepare for future missions, including into Gaza's southern city of Rafah. Much of the Khan Yunis area is now in ruins after months of bombardment and heavy fighting between Israeli troops and fighters from Palestinian groups. Sunday marked six months since Hamas, designated a terrorist organization by the US, UK and others, attacked Israel, killing around 1,200 people and taking more than 250 others hostages. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to crush and destroy Hamas so that it no longer posed any threat, launching a mission to bring all hostages home. In the war that has followed, Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says at least 33,000 people have been killed. Israel says many thousands of those are armed militants. On Sunday, tens of thousands of protesters in Israel took to the streets, calling for the Israeli government to strike a deal to bring home hostages and for Mr Netanyahu to resign. Well, let's speak now to our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, who is in Jerusalem. Jeremy, good to see you. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu under huge pressure at home and internationally. Uh, what's your assessment of where this conflict could go next, what his next move could be? Well, those troops are pulling back from Han Yunus, or they've gone, and there have been pictures. Of course, we can't get into Gaza ourselves but the, because the Israelis and the Egyptians won't let us, but there are pictures circulating uh, from... Uh, Gaza of people walking in the morning sun back to through the ruins towards Khan Yunis. Um, you know, there are different theories about why the Israelis are doing this. They are saying themselves that they're going to sort themselves out, re-equip, re re retrain and get ready for an assault on Rafah. There are other speculations in the Israeli media this morning that actually it's more with an eye to the uh, negotiations going on for a hostage deal and a ceasefire in Cairo, in which the Americans are very deeply involved, and that this is um, the, the Hamas is calling for a pull pull out of Gaza. So perhaps there's a theory that if they pull back from Khan Yunis, that might be sort of attractive as a as a halfway house. It's not clear. And to be honest, over the months when there have been these negotiations between the different sides uh, regarding a hostage prisoner swap, regarding a ceasefire. I think, I think we've learned it's foolish to speculate in advance about which way they will go because lots of leaks come out of it. But it does appear that the Americans are keen to try to get a deal done. As you said, Jeremy, people are starting to return to the area of Khan Yunis. What do you think this so-called next phase will mean when it comes to getting aid into Gaza? Well, under massive pressure from the Americans after that team from the World Central Kitchens were killed by the Israelis, uh, which incidentally that organization is one of the few of the relief organizations there which actually was considered to have a pretty good relationship with the Israelis. But after that, Joe Biden put massive pressure on Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu to open up more crossings, which Netanyahu had always said would be impossible. Well, he opened them or they're in the process of being opened uh, and also promised to allow some aid through the container port of Ashdod. But it's still very early days and it's not clear whether trucks are moving through the areas crossing into the north. And to be honest, it will take a massive influx of aid, not just food aid, but medical aid and the people to administer it to stave off what by common consent and by hard data is an imminent famine in northern Gaza which might already have arrived. Jeremy, what about the future of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as those demonstrations continue to grow around Israel uh, and anger continues to grow about the lack of the return of those hostages? Mm. Yeah, those demonstrations, the things to, and to know about those demonstrations are it's not like they're, they're not demonstrating for an end to the war. What they're demonstrating is against the government saying, why on earth have you not managed after six months to do some kind of a deal to get those hostages back? Because there is a deal to be done if Israel is prepared to, nasty language, but it's what, what it is, pay the price 
in terms of uh, releasing Palestinian prisoners and acceding to some of the other demands that Hamas has made. Uh, you know, you talk to people in those demos and they say, look, make the deal, get the hostages back, then do what you want in Gaza. But that pro-hostage movement, if you like, has come together with the pre-existing anti-Netanyahu movement. And uh, they were demonstrating very much in the months before uh, Hamas attacked at the beginning of October last year. And for a while, they put everything on hold, national unity, rallying around the flag and all that kind of thing. But now it is absolutely not seen as unpatriotic. Uh, to demonstrate in the streets because they want Netanyahu out. But he has a parliamentary majority, and as long as he can hold on to that parliamentary majority, it's a couple of years before the next election. Okay, Jeremy in Jerusalem, thank you.